Today, I will share with you my thoughts on the Sony A9 Mark III. Initially, I didn't plan to talk about this camera because when I noticed this A9 Mark III, actually, there have been many reviews already. And regarding to this camera, the most attractive thing must be the global shutter. It no longer uses the common rolling shutter, and because with so many reviews, everyone must know the benefits of the global shutter. But some friends also said to me that, can you tell me about your idea of this camera? Well, so I thought, what else I want to say? First, I don't have the camera for a practical test. I can only talk on paper. I mean with the spec only. So today, what I mainly talk about is, is this a Mark III really suitable for you? And what exactly is this camera suitable for? First of all, with a global shutter, the A9 Mark III no longer has a mechanical shutter. And with the global shutter, it can have a very fast shutter speed of 1 over 80,000 seconds. Sure, it is an advantage, but whether you can use this advantage is a factor to consider. Or based on your shooting habits or objects, do you think your existing camera is still limited with its capability? So, your first consideration will be this high speed shutter speed. Regarding the sensor, it's a full frame in size, but only with 24.6 million pixels. Its minimum ISO is 250 and the maximum is 25,600, and it can be extended to 125 and 51,200. And regarding the minimum ISO 250, some people think this is a problem because of certain topics. People want to keep a low ISO in order to reduce the shutter speed. So what's the difference between 50 and 250? There's about 2 and a 1 fourth stop difference between 50 and 250. In fact, it seems not too much. But people will still concern two things. First, most people will still think the lower the ISO, the higher your image quality will be. So they will wonder whether the picture quality will be sacrificed with a higher ISO. Yes, maybe, but I will suggest that don't think about it so much for now. Because if the manufacturer gives you a base ISO, and in fact, this would be the best ISO recommend, I think that it won't be too far off. And since it can reach 1 over 80,000 per second of the shutter speed, so you may not need to use any filter in many situations to obtain an ideal exposure. And let's take a look at its other benefit. The camera can really do 120 frames per second now, but this only lasts about 2 seconds with its buffer. That is, you have filmed 240 photos in 2 seconds. So if you can really capture that magic moment in just 2 seconds, it is really good for certain shooting topics. But I think it's very hard to perfectly success with this limited 2 magic seconds. So I will suggest that it's better to use it for certain precise slow motion. Of course, there are other cameras with similar performance, but it's still a good choice. If you shoot RAW, it can film 60 pictures per second, and 30 pictures per second for long compressed RAW. I think these numbers are pretty good. So if you use it to shoot some fast objects or sports, and think that the camera you are using is always not enough for the job, so you can think about the above data. And besides, there is also AI tracking, including cars and motorcycles. So the Sony A9 Mark III is very good for certain racing sports. Loaded to be like that what I did last time in my tour, I got only an aging camera without advanced functions. So I have to use my experience and skill to compensate and achieve certain fast racing bike pan shots. But if you use the A9 Mark III, you don't need to bother to have superior skill for such photos. And regarding video, it can shoot up to 960 frames per second cropped 2K video. For cropping the 6K sensor to 2K resolution, the results will look similar and smaller than the M4 third. In addition, 480 frames per second can be achieved with oversampled 2K. Or 240 frames per second crop 4K video can be achieved. And so, 
that will be in the APS-C size. Or it can shoot 120 frames per second 4K over sampling video. And generally speaking, the frame weight of the videos is high. But again, of course, there are other machines can also do that. And for your reference, I would like to talk about two more points. The first is the Sony A9 Mark III is not the first global shutter camera. And regarding the video hybrid, I will talk about filming video later. The second point is if talking about without a mechanical shutter. The A9 Mark III is not the first one. The Nikon Z9 does not have a mechanical shutter either. But Z9 does not use GoPro shutter. Why is the Z9 so bold that using a rolling shutter but without a mechanical shutter? It's just because for taking still pictures, rolling shutter is never a problem. For if the speed of the rolling shutter is indeed very fast already, the performance is quite similar to the GoPro shutter. So okay, then we come back to the GoPro shutter. GoPro shutter is not a new item to video camera either. The previous CCD camera are all using GoPro shutter, but why the CCD was replaced? It's because once the CCD is heated, and the picture will become very noisy. In fact, in terms of taking still pictures, GoPro shutters is not a must. If you are going to take photos with fast action or quick movements, GoPro shutter will give you some benefit, but generally speaking, it's not so obvious. Why? This is because there are mechanical shutters in various cameras. It offset the shortcomings of rolling shutter perfectly. So, problem will only be occurred unless you just rely on the electronic shutter entirely. But once the camera is equipped with a GoPro shutter, the mechanical shutter can be taken away. The advantage is that there is no more bad screen when birds shooting. But since Z9 can do it, so you can consider Z9 also for if you just don't want the black screen during bird shooting, since the Z9 is a bit cheaper. And then we talk about if you want to make movies, can GoPro shutter give you any advantage? I always say that for motion picture, the benchmark and the best camera in the industry is the ARIA Lesser. And all ARI cameras have low GoPro shutter, just rolling shutter. But Hollywood filmmakers are still using it. Hollywood won't change the camera just because of a GoPro shutter. So 90% or more of the Hollywood uses ARI are lesser. The rest 10% or just 8% is maybe Sony's Venus or Red, Red camera. And Sony's Venus uses rolling shutter. And most of the Red camera are using rolling shutter. Basically, nearly 100% movies you are watching now were all filmed with rolling shutter cameras. So, does it tell us something? But on the other hand, RED released a camera with GoPro shutter, and that is the Komodo. Regarding the price, it's also about US dollar 60,000 for the body only. But it's a professional film camera, and if you look at the Red Komodo website, you can really find the benefit of a GoPro shutter. The number one is, no matter a fast scene or any fast object you are going to take, the image will not be deformed. Or even the propeller of a helicopter won't bend in shape. The second point is, no matter what flashing light or what strobe is, no problem, it can all be synchronized. So you can shoot any spark or any flash. And again, not to mention any fluorescent, neon light or display. So no more flickering easel. Besides, the Komodo sensor gets a quite good dynamic range of around 16 stops. And after using global shutter, your VFX or special effects for post-production are also benefit. Why? As soon as we will tidy the nice asterisks. It will make your keying process a little easier and cleaner. And by the way, let me compare the Red Komodo with the A9 Mark III for video shooting. The A9 Mark III uses Sony's lens adapter, so you better use Sony lenses. But of course, since it's a mirrorless, you may also use an adapter. And then all the other SLR lenses can be used. And most important is that it's full frame. Regarding the record model, the sensor size is around as the APS-C, but it's a bit larger, and indeed it's a Super 35. It's just a little bit wider than the APS-C. It's 27mm by 14mm, 
It's lot 4 to 3 and is already a typical 60 to line ratio. The Komodo uses the RF lens ring. RF is of course a mirrorless ring, so you may also extend it by utilizing other adapters. For using its own native adapter, there is the built-in anti filter mount. And one more exciting feature from the Komodo is, now you can also use autofocus function with this formal movie camera. Now with those movie cameras produced by RED, can automatically focus. And more important is that is face detection. So if you use the native RF adapter and if you use the Canon original lenses, it can do almost everything as the original Canon hybrid cameras. And besides, as I often say that, when you use mirrorless camera, you don't have to worry too much about its sensor size. Why? For example, for the APS-C, it can become full frame if you add on a speed booster. Same as for the M4 third, add up with a speed booster, it then change into the APS-C format. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but at least you get the same FOV. However, as I always repeat that I don't think full frame has a very powerful advantage on shooting video, since its depth of field is just too short. So if you don't want a such shallow depth of field, you have to close the aperture. However, the large aperture is better for motion picture. Because of the large aperture, you can have more convenient control of the light. You can even film at light without involving too much lighting. But for full frame, and if you want to close the aperture for a longer depth of field, you have to increase the ISO or maybe put on more lights. Then it will affect the picture quality or the working skill. So I often say that the full frame is not the best choice for shooting videos. The first choice for shooting videos I will suggest is still the Super 35 or the APS-C. And for a smaller production team, I often say that the best one would be the M4 third. And for using this Komodo, you can shoot up to 6K long cropped video in 40 frames per second, or 60 frames per second in 4K. But we remember that such true movie cameras, just unlike those hybrid cameras, there won't be any oversampling imaging method. So when it shoots 4K, the method is cropping. And with this sensor, if it was cropped to 4K, it's likely to be similar as M4 third. It can also shoot HD. HD can shoot up to 120 frames, but when it shoots HD, it's equivalent to a 4 times cropping. So if you shoot super slow motion with Komodo, in fact, it's equivalent to shooting super steady photo. Remind again, there is low oversampling. But at last, in terms of video, I think Komodo will be better than the A-Line Mark III. Or just for chasing a GoPro shutter, are there any other choices? There is also the Z-Cam E2 M5G. It's a 5K M4 third camera. However, regarding this 5K M4 third, my first consideration is, since it has such high number of resolutions, the high ISO picture quality, of course, will be a little bit worse. So, coming for that conversation, the E2 has dual native ISO, and under the dual ISO, there are 16 stops of dynamic range. But I don't test the second before, so it's just a recommendation based on paper again. And for this set cam, it's not too expensive, just around US dollar 4,000 something. Of course, you will limit to use M4 foot lens for this set cam. Suppose if you want to have the autofocus function. And at last, let me have a brief conclusion for today's topic. First, global shutter is not a completely kingly way. And actually, La Rolling Shutter also does a good job. Global shutter may be useful in some very extreme circumstances only. So you don't really must have it, especially because it's quite expensive. Or if you don't want to use mechanical shutter for burst shooting, you can consider the Nikon Z9. Or if you really want a global shutter moving camera, you can also consider the Red Komodo or the Z-Cam E2 M5A. That's all for today, and thank you everyone. Bye.